This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Winning Cures Everything, Pac-12 North College Football Previews and Predictions. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ah, you know where to find us, Winning Cures Everything. You can follow us on Twitter at Winning Cures. You can follow me at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, all of them. Go check it out. Share it out. Leave some nice reviews. We would appreciate that. The show brought to you by BetNow.eu. Amazing online sports book. You can use promo code WINNING50. W-I-N-N-I-N-G-5-0. They'll give you a 50% deposit bonus. Put in 500 bucks, they're gonna give you 250. You put in 50 bucks, they'll give you 25. It's whatever you want to do. I'm telling you though, great online sports book, great layout. They treat us well, they will treat you well. They make betting simple, and that's all you can ask for. So go check them out for yourself, betnow.eu. Chris, Pac-12 North. You got some uh you got some teams you like in here, don't you? I do. I I really like this division. I got some that I like as well here. For for what I think. Ali, wow. I don't know. The, the redneck just came out of that. <laughs> For what I think about the Pac-12 South, it, it, it is just a 180-degree difference in what I think about the Pac-12 North. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think this is one of the better conferences from top to bottom in college football. I think you and I are probably going to start off with some controversy. We're going to fight. Okay, let's fight. The Cal Golden Bears. Seven and six last year, four and five in the conference. They returned four starters on offense, seven on defense. Experience wise, number 93 in the country. Not great. Number nine in the conference. Head coach Justin Wilcox has completely flipped Cal's philosophy. Look, in Sonny Dykes' last year, that was 2016, they had the number 10 total offense, number 125 total defense. In 2018, last year, they had the number 115 total offense and the number 15 total defense. They completely flipped. Completely flipped the script. Sophomore quarterback uh, Chase Garber, he's back with three offensive linemen, but an all-new supporting cast. Uh, they need to replace workhorse running back Patrick Laird. Uh, they, they need skill players. They need guys, right? Okay. And they weren't very explosive to begin with. So I, know, so I know you can make numbers say whatever you want. It's one of those situations where maybe those dudes that aren't coming back are a good thing. Maybe, or it could be a coaching thing. But we'll see, right? We'll, we'll see what's going on. I like Will. Uh, the defense allowed 24 or more just two times in 2018, <clears throat> and they will be great again. They're returning all five starters in the secondary. They were number nine against the pass in the country. Uh, the offense has got to find a way to score more. They lost four games when holding teams to 24 or less. They were the number 116 scoring offense in the country last year. Uh, their over-under is 6. You go over, it's plus 120. You go under, it's minus 140. <sighs> um, you're not going to like this. I got them 4-8. I got them 2-7 and seven in the conference. Look, my wins, I've got them winning against UC Davis, against North Texas, against Arizona State, and against Oregon State. But then I've got a loss at Washington, at Ole Miss, at Oregon, at Utah. And then losses to Washington State, USC, at Stanford, and at UCLA. This is it's just not going to happen. Like <laughs> I knew we were going to fight about that. But that's just that's just not not realistic. It's just not going to happen. Like I don't know if they're going to win. I've got them seven and and where am I at? Start. Seven and five. Seven and five. I was I was doing NFL stuff and almost said seven and nine. Um, <laughs> I've got them seven and five, and I've got a coin flip game at at, at Ole Miss right down the road. I think they win that, but if they lose that, it wouldn't shock me, okay? And then I've got them beating USC and UCLA, all right? So that's okay. that's the three-game difference that we've got. You can convince me they'll lose one of those games. They're not going to lose both of those games. They won't finish the season 0-3. Well, that I've, just, I've got them losing the at, last five. Well, I know that. That's just not going to happen because great coach teams don't do that. It, they figure out ways to win ball games. Well, I mean, li- listen to the end of the schedule, though. It's I, at Utah, I, I get it. Washington State, USC, at Stanford, at UCLA. I understand. But like, I don't think that at USC and at UCLA 
is something that they should be afraid of. No, I don't think that they'd be afraid of it, but I think as far as talent goes, when, as far as teams that will be able to put up some points, even though they're going against Cal's defense, I think those teams will be able to put up points. See, I, I don't know that that's true because I think Cal's defense going up against USC's offensive line, we covered this in the last, game, yeah. last section, like, I don't, I don't know that USC is just throwing up 30. I mean, you might be right. I just don't. I just don't but but I, I, I got a lot of trust the, in, in Graham Harrell. The other part of it is a great coach is not going to let his team lose five in a row. They're just not going to happen. You can convince me that they come on the road and they come all the way across the country and they come to the Mississippi Heat and they lose to Ole Miss. That absolutely could happen. If that's a night game, it's good for Cal. If it's a, if it's a noon game... It, That's it bad. is real bad for Cal. Yeah. And it's not a body clock problem. It's going to be 120 degrees on the field problem. And that's like, that's week four, so they don't have the time for that one just yet. But Yeah. yeah. Um, you can convince me that could happen. I could be wrong on that. That's a coin flip game. I flipped a coin. It came up Cal. Um, I, I trust Cal's coach better than I trust the coach. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Right now. But there's just no way you're going to convince me that they're going to. I don't know when they're going to. Maybe they win at Utah. Maybe they pull off a crazy upset. Maybe they come off off a, off the bye week and, and beat Washington State. I mean, I they almost did last year, right? I don't know the answer. I know this. They won't lose five in a row because they're too great of a coach to team. Okay. Great coaches don't let that happen. So you've got them seven and five. Got them seven and five. And I've got them four and eight. Not good. If Not they good. end up six and six, I would, I would still feel fine about that. Four I can believe eight, that. I just can't believe. What's the over-under? Over under six, but the under is minus one forty. The over is plus one twenty. So they it, Vegas seems to think that they're going to be basically right on the numbers, yep. and I can believe that. Yep. All, All right. right, Oregon Ducks, the quack attack. The Oregon Ducks nine and four last year, five and four in the conference. Returning starters, they got check this out. Bet you never heard this before. Twelve returning starters on offense. They had two guys that, that kind of split starting played, played enough minutes to where they both considered yeah. stars. Offense has got, uh, or sorry, the defense has got seven back. Uh, Experience-wise, number one in the conference, number one in the country. I was just about to say, that has to be one in the country. They are number one in the country. Their over-under is eight and a half. Over is minus 155. Under is plus 135. So they, of course, think that they will be nine and three at least, maybe yep. ten and two. Head coach Mario Cristobal has the most experienced team in the country and the number seven recruiting class in the country, along with the number one recruit in the country. Uh, the offense returns senior quarterback Justin Herbert, who, yes, everybody thinks he's fantastic, he's amazing, he should have gone to the NFL, etc. He had a few games where he was under a 70 QBR. I mean, he was, yeah. he was not great all the time, but senior quarterback, that's always good to have, right? Uh, they've got 11 other players that started last year for the number 25 scoring offense. Number 25, that's pretty good. We think they're going to be better this year because of all of that experience. I think so. I think, I think so, so, too. Not, uh, yeah. Number 55 total defense. They bring in ESPN number one recruit Kayvon Thibodeau to anchor the defensive line. Three out of four in the secondary are back. I don't know if that's a good thing or not because they were number 82 in passing defense last year. Uh, that the, front line makes that secondary better. Yeah. The offense has to find a way to score more. They lost four games. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the schedule. It's not It's not the offense. It's the schedule. Schedule's difficult. They Schedule's got road games to score more. at Stanford, at Washington, at USC, at Arizona State, and then a neutral site game against Auburn to kick things off. I'll tell you, I freaking love this team. I do, too. I do, too. I wonder if I love them more than you. You do because you hate one of the teams on the schedule. Yeah, maybe. That's it. Maybe. That's the answer. I've got them 11 and 1. I knew that. <laughs> You've got them I've, 11 and 1. I've got them 10 and 2. I've got the Auburn game, and you don't. Yeah. I that's pretty that. much it. I, 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 what, what's I just, the, what's I the game that you've got them losing? What, what's the game you got them losing? Washington State. I got to beat Washington. I got them losing to Washington State. I've got them losing at Washington. But I, I could see the Washington State game. I mean, it's at home. You you go on the road. You win a big game because at Washington is right after Colorado. That's right. Um, you know, I mean, the early part, like, I think they're going to get some revenge on you, Stanford this I, year. I think you go on the road. You beat who I think is up there with Oregon as the best team in the conference, not the division, the whole conference. Yeah. And, and 
And I think you beat that team on the road, you come home, and there's always that little bit of a letdown. Okay. That, I can see that. I can see that. So I've got them 11-1, 8-1. There's a lot of There's a lot of just Mike Leach blow it here, too, though. I mean, you might be right. I'm not going to deny that. You might be right. Um, all right, so you've got them 10-2. and two. You got them eight and one in conference. I think we really like this team. I really like this team a lot. All right, let's move on to somebody that I think we're probably not going to like. Okay. The Oregon State Beavers. You want to take that and just flip it? <sighs> yeah. I mean, just um, everything about it? Actually, yeah. I, 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 well, <laughs> here. Look, they, they went, Oregon State went two and ten last year. Okay. One and eight in the conference. Six starters back on offense, seven on defense. Experience-wise, number two in the conference, number seven in the country. So that's good. All those guys that were there and really bad last year are all coming Are all back. back. Yeah. Good job. Head coach Jonathan Smith had signs of progress in year one, but still at least a year away from having a competitive roster, and that's the problem, right? They, right. they just don't have the dudes. Uh, I think Jonathan Smith is going to be a good coach, but I think that it was so depleted after Gary Anderson left. That you've you've and, got to find a way to recruit at Oregon State. Yeah, number you 60 get kids that want to play football to come there. Number 67 total offense, number 47 passing offense. Quarterback battle is between 6 foot 7 sixth year senior Jake Luton and Nebraska transfer Tristan Gibbons. So this um, could be the civil war I keep cutting you off, apologize. That's all good. This could be the civil war of the two tallest quarterbacks in college football. Yeah, I think both uh, six, both seven six seven has to be Yeah, the I think tallest. I think it is. I think it is. Uh Let's see, Jamar Jefferson, running back, returns. He finished uh, number nine in the country in rushing yards last year. So that's that's good. The offense obviously was was clicking. Number 129 in scoring, rushing, and total defense. All of them. They were next to last in every one of those categories. Look, they, they brought in a bunch of transfers, a bunch of JUCOs, but they just they need better players overall. Nine and at 39. Every, at, at every level of the game. Every position. And they're bringing all those guys back from last year, which means yeah. they don't have better players at all those positions. Well, I mean, they, they brought in some transfers. They yes, brought in okay. some Juco guys. They they got bigger. Some of those dudes are going to start over guys that were there that have been last there. year. So they're, yeah. not br- they're bringing them back, they're, which means they get to, like, dress and stay on the sidelines and practice. Pretty much. But those guys from last year aren't going to play. 9-39 and 39 over the last four years, the team had absolutely quit on Gary Anderson. Yes. Uh, tough schedule. Even in year two, I, I still think this is a year zero That's spot I, for Coach Smith. When, um, you're, when you're that bad in college football, it's not basketball of the one and done for all the freshmen come in and can play immediately. Uh, JUCOs do come in and change things quickly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they can at this spot, it, it, at least not with this schedule. I got them two wins, and it's it, one of them I'm just, I just kind of give up. I have got them at one win. Their over-under is two. Over is plus 130. Yeah. And then the under is minus 150. So Ain't nobody hitting that over. Yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody's hitting that over. I, I gave them the Hawaii game. I, I know you them, don't. I gave them Cal Poly. Well, yeah, I think we got um, that. But I, I think they lose at home to Oklahoma State. I think they lose at, a, at Hawaii. But then the rest of this schedule. Well, it's conference, and it's brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's Stanford at UCLA, Utah at Cal, at Arizona, Washington, Arizona State, at Washington State, at Oregon. Talked about this a little bit in the South preview. They do catch Arizona coming off a bye. If that was at home, I would I would find a way to get them a See, that's the thing. The, the, but they're going on the road. The games that are that could maybe right. have been coin flips yeah. are all on the road. You're and at, then their you, toughest games are you got home. a bye week, and then you got Stanford. I just don't think Stanford's losing to this team. No, it, well, and then you got a bye week, and you got to go on the road to Arizona. So you you've got Cal Poly at home. That's right. right. I'm not worried about but that. But the other home games are Oklahoma State, Stanford, Utah, Washington, Arizona State. It's not going to work out. Who in that bunch are they going to be able to beat? It's tough. It's just tough. You're, you're in a rebuild, and you get, and you got to rebuild. That's what it looks like to rebuild. Yeah, I mean it's it's bad. They're really good at baseball. That, yeah, they are. They are definitely that. There you go. You got you got that though. And they're getting better at basketball too. True. Next up, the Stanford Cardinals fighting trees. Believe that. Fear the tree. Stanford, nine and four last year. Went six and three in conference. 
They return three starters on offense, uh, one of which, K.J. Costello, always good. Uh, five starters back on defense, not the guys that you want, though. Number 118 in the country in experience, number 12 in the conference. That is dead last for anybody that's keeping score. Good. Head coach David Shaw, 82 and 26 in eight years. They normally keep to a run-first philosophy, but last year they were number 123 in rushing and number 23 or 25 in passing offense. Offensive coordinator, Tavita Pritchard. They get uh, quarterback K.J. Costello back, like I mentioned, but they lose wide receiver Arcega Whiteside, and they need the offensive line to improve. It was the number 85 total offense in the country last year. Not good. You Defense? Wanna... Okay. Defense right. always going to be pretty good under defense coordinator Lance uh, Anderson, but last year, number 115 passing defense. They've got only two defensive backs returning, so as you and I say, maybe that's a good thing. That's, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe, maybe somebody better can but, come in. But they are bringing in nobody with real experience, and that's a problem. All so, right. at, at least early. Before you did this breakdown, I thought we might fight again. Maybe we won't. No, I don't, I don't think we're going to fight on this one. Only one road game in conference against a winning team, but a murderous non-conference schedule combined with little experience. I don't think this sets up well for David Shaw. What's their over-under? The over-under for them is 7.5. Over is plus 130, under is minus 150. There's a lot of plus 130s out there, and I think Vegas knows. Yeah. These teams aren't getting there. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're getting there. I've got them at 7 and 5. Got them at 6 and 6. I think either one of those is completely feasible. Do you um, have them winning the Northwestern game? I have them losing the Northwestern Because our boys are listening. I've got them losing to Northwestern. Me I've got too. them losing at USC. But then I've got them going on the road and beating UCF because I don't think they start off 0-3. Uh, then they lose to Oregon, so they start out 1-3, and and then i got them going on a run. you got them losing to USC. So you really like this USC team. I think that this USC team early will be able to put up a bunch of points because I think that what Graham Harrell does will work really well with JT Shaw, or J, uh, JT uh, Daniels. Okay. All right. So I and that's I just, might be wrong on this. You might be right. That's just my opinion. Um, but I, I think because their offense is going to be so different early, it's going to catch some people off guard. I right? don't think there's any way they win that UCF game. And let me tell you why. The same reason Cal might not win the Ole Miss the game. Miss game. They're gonna come down Humanity. in the middle of September. Yeah. Yeah. From the from the valleys of the the the, the left coast. From the from the Great Bay. Well, I'll tell you this: Palo Alto is pretty warm. Like it's it, it ain't the same kind of warm. It ain't 120, and you can't breathe. Yeah, warm. it's it's not walking through a wet towel. That's right. right. It's 120 percent um, community. This is what community? I'm community. Community humidity. I haven't. I'm just drinking water. Yeah, that's tonight's tonight's been a rough one for it me. It happens. Hey, you know what? It's because we've done it in two weeks. That's yeah. But that's it, man. I I think in these teams that come from north. And and from the West Coast, where these where dry areas, and they come south early, it's not going to be easy. I mean, yeah, look, and there's nowhere right. for you to go to prepare for that. Like you can, like do things to go like indoor facilities to like suck oxygen out of them and and try to work with like uh, uh, altitude and things of that nature. And they, there's just nothing you can do unless you find a swamp somewhere. You're not preparing for this humidity. You're just not. Your body's not going to be ready for it. I'm a. I'm gonna looking hit you up like to a see. Brick. I think the game is. I think it's at two thirty. Oh, that's gonna be brutal. That's that's kind of what I was. East thinking. Coast two thirty. Central way to be East Coast three thirty. It don't matter. It's you. You might be right. Where is UCF in the? Okay, right there. UCF. Give me. It's week three. Week three. It is a two thirty p.m. game. UCF is favored by two and a half. They really needed that to be at night. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't know. I I still just I I think that that is the the game that Stanford can pull off here because I, I I think they lose at USC. I think they lose to Northwestern. I don't think they start at zero and four because I'm I'm fairly certain they're going to get beat by Oregon. But they, and so after that, I've got them winning five in a row at Oregon oh. State. Uh, I've got them beating Washington. Whoa, uh, we see Washington way different then. I don't think so. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. We, yeah, we do. Uh, UCLA, I think they beat. I think they beat Arizona at home. I think they win at Colorado. Lose at Washington State. Beat Cal. Lose to Notre Dame. I've got them 7-5, and 5-4 five, five and four in the conference. Okay. 
I got him six and six. I'm standing there. I can get down with that. Where are we going next? The Washington Huskies. Ten and four last year, seven and two in conference. They returned seven starters on offense, two on defense. So that's obviously not good. Uh, number 11 in experience in the conference, number 109 in the country. Chris Peterson, 47 and 21 in five years. Uh, he has had three straight 10 win years, but this will really rely heavily on offense this year. Quarterback Jacob Eason, Georgia transfer, he's going to be the starter. Four out of five offensive linemen return. Tight end Hunter Bryant can be an absolute star. Uh, number 12, total defense allowed only one gain of 40 plus yards last year, which is really impressive. Uh, but they return only two players. Senior safety, uh, Miles Bryant, is he's going to be the leader of this defense. Uh, Washington has recruited well, so it should not be a total rebuild, even with the lack of experience. I'm telling you, I love this team. The over-under okay. is nine. Over nine is minus 140. Going under is plus 120. Um, I hope I press the right one here. Where's... 11 and 1. I got him 11 and 1 this year. All right, something went wrong because you've got him losing two different games somewhere. No, I've got him losing to Stanford. Oh, you had you don't you have him beating Oregon. Yeah, I've got them beating Oregon. Okay, okay. I've got him Because you've got one. you've got Oregon beating uh Washington. them and losing to Washington State. Yeah. I've got them right. beating Washington State okay. but losing to So we are Washington. exactly the same. I have them 11 and 1. With the loss to Oregon, and so That's and it. eight and one in the conference. Eight and one in the conference. I think that this team is legit. I want it. I was this close to making them undefeated. I, see, and I I couldn't do that because I I don't think they're that talented, but I think against this schedule, I I think Chris Peterson is one of the top three coaches in all of college football. Oh, I do, I do agree with that. And I think when he's got a quarterback and an offense. It doesn't matter. He just figures things out. He they they got lucky with having Oregon at home, a bye week, and then Utah at home. That's right. Uh, they get they get their two hardest games at home and a bye with week. With a bye week right in between them. You don't want to play them back to back, but the bye week between them helps a lot. Yeah, it really does. It really does. I mean, they really need to just be healthy for this three week period. Yeah. And then and then win the Apple Cup. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so we both like Washington, eleven and one. Uh, I've got them winning the division over Oregon because of that win. So I would have Oregon winning it, but it would not shock me at all if they win it. Yeah. And if they win it in my way, they go undefeated. <laughs> they win the Pac-12 undefeated. I wonder, do they get in? It's a good question. The Pac-12 overall is down. But Oregon, Washington, and I still have Washington State being pretty good, and have Utah pretty good. There aren't a lot of conferences that are going to have four teams with nine, ten wins. Oh, I, I agree. So while you, we normally don't, and the most of college football has not thought well of the Pac-12 lately because the Blue Bloods are not what they used to be, if you've got four, let's say, for instance, Washington State pulls off a miracle, they get ten wins. Yeah, At four, in our opinion, we would think they would finish with four 10-win teams. And one of those would be undefeated. Yeah, because I've, I've got And I've that got one Utah. that's undefeated also played all three of the other ones. I've got Utah 11-1. and one. I've got Washington 11-1 and one in the uh, Pac-12 title game. Yep. And then you've got Oregon sitting on the outside at 11-1. and one. That's right, at 11-1. and one. Um, And then, I mean, I guess it, it's a play-in game for the playoff, but... It's got to be, right? I think like, Oregon you would can't... probably have the better non-conference win if they beat Auburn. Yeah, but... So, it's just kind of... It's up in the air, right? Like, I think all these teams are going to be really good. They'll all have 10 or 11 wins. At some point in time, I think head-to-head has to matter. And if Washington State ends up with 9 or 10 wins, and Washington has wins over Washington State, Oregon, and Utah, if they have those, that's a better resume than Oregon having a win over... Well, I guess they would have the same thing. They would have it over Washington State. They'd have Washington Auburn. State, uh, Auburn. They don't play Utah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't play Utah. So that I think that would hurt them. They lose the head-to-head argument, and they don't have that third 
big win yeah, on the re- schedule. Yeah, I mean you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, it, if if you've got two 11 and one teams playing in the Pac-12 title game, the winner of that is going to the playoff. I think so. Yeah, I really, I, I really do. I think I, it'd be think hard so to too. leave them out. Uh, let's move on to the last one, Washington State. This is this is this is our boy, the Washington State Cougars. Look, eleven and two last year, seven and two in conference. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, six on defense. Experience wise, though, number ten in the conference, number one hundred in the country. Uh, head coach Mike Leach, forty nine and forty in seven years. He has finally gotten a defense that has has stayed there and maintained even after. Uh, Alex Grinch goes off to Ohio sure. State, now Oklahoma. Um, he's He's got this defense to go with this high-powered offense. They're 37-15 and 15 over the last four years. That is really, really good. At, at Washington State, hell yes. Yep. Uh, Eastern Washington graduate transfer, and the solid verbal guys call him Gage Gubrud. Now, I think it's Gage. I, about to say, I think it's Gage. But I think I like Gage better. All right. I'm going to go with Gage. So, Gage Gubrud is going to be the quarterback. Uh, 11,000 total yards and 100 touchdowns at Eastern Washington. He looks to continue what Gardner Minshew did in 2018. Seven of their eight top wide receivers return. Four of their five top offensive linemen. Uh, Number 42 total and scoring defense. Senior safety Jalen Thompson is going to lead the D. Only three starters return on the front seven. But I think they've got the guys to be able to replace them. Yeah. Tough road schedule. Uh, I think Leach and defensive coordinator Tracy Clays have heightened the expectations to contend for the Pac-12 South every year. I think their road games are ridiculously hard. Uh, I think they win every home game, and I think that they beat Houston on well on the road, but neutral site in Houston at NRG Stadium. Um, but I got them eight and four. The uh, the over under for them, by the way, uh, is eight. Over is minus 125. Under is plus 105. So Vegas thinks that it's more likely they get to nine wins than seven. That's right. But I, I think I've got them sitting right on eight. Uh, and here's here's why. Um, they play at Utah. I think that's a loss. I think they lose at Arizona State. because Coming off a of bye week. You think they, off, can't, they can't figure it Arizona out. Arizona State's also coming off a of bye. So, but I, I think... They, there's always that one game, right? Yeah, they do always lose a game to a team they and, should And last just year, beat. they didn't lose that game, oh, but they got... taken from them. Well, they, well, no, no, no. They got super close. Which game were you talking about? The USC game. Okay, that one, yes. Absolutely was taken from them. But the, the game that they should not have lost that they got real close to was Cal. That's right. That's right. Um, so this year at Arizona State, I think it's going to be tough. Uh, they've got at Oregon. I think that's a loss. They've got at Washington. Until they beat Washington, I'm not going to pick them to do it. I agree. Um, but I've got them winning over Stanford, over Oregon State, at Cal, Colorado, UCLA, Houston, Northern Colorado, and New Mexico State. So I think 8-4 and four this season would be pretty good. I, okay. I don't think that uh, Gubrud can be as good as Gardner Minshew was. Now, I could be completely I wrong I've seen Mike Leach make... Lesser men. I know. Better I know. quarterbacks. But but I've also seen where like this is Washington State is an eight and four, nine and three kind of team, talent wise. Okay. So getting to eight wins again, I think is something to be uh, applauded. Don't don't I absolutely don't disagree with you there. I, I eight and four is still a, a good season. Washington State. Yes. That is a successful year. You go to a bowl game, win that bowl game, you get nine wins. That's a successful year. No doubt about it. What you got them at? I got them at 10 and 2. I got them at 10 and 2 because I got them beating Utah, which is the biggest game I've got them beaten. Utah's only loss. Okay. No, it's not. I've got Utah losing two games. Um, that's right. You had them 11 to 1. I got them 10 to 2. Um, and then I've got them. The bye week, beating them Arizona State. I got them losing at Oregon and at Washington. Okay. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Um, all right, so 10-2, and two, and I've got them 8-4. and four. I and we, love Mike Leach. I know you do. I, I think I want so badly for him, and I don't know that he'll ever do it, because I don't think he cares about living in a big city 
with or even in a big college town with like a massive amount of of pressure to win, I would love to see what he would do at a place like an Ohio State or a Michigan or uh, an LSU or a Florida or a Georgia or an Alabama, like where you have the best talent in the country or top 10 talent well, in and, the country. And almost unlimited resources. Yes. Right now, we've seen him be one of the best coaches in the country at maybe two of the poorest schools in the country. Yeah. I mean, they're in the hundreds of how much they spend on yeah. football. It's pretty crazy. Now, Lubbock is probably different today, but when he was there, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. You're right. You're right. All right, that's going to wrap up the Pac-12 South. Head over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to betnow.eu. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.